Good evening. I'd like to talk to you about your body, particularly the bacteria in and on your body. We call them microbes because you can't see them, but they're there all right. They're in your mouth, they're on your skin, they're mainly in your intestine, they're in all body cavities. And we can't live without them. We need these. I got mine from my mother when I was born. You got yours from your mother when you were born. In fact, we come into this world sterile, and we will leave this world predominantly microbial, mainly bacterial. In fact, most of the cells in your body in adulthood are bacteria. Only a minority of the cells in your body are human. So you, in fact, are only a minority component of yourself. <laughs> now, we can't live without them. We need them. We wouldn't develop normally without them. Because the simple fact of the matter is that the DNA, the genes that you got from your parents, contains insufficient information for you to develop. There is simply not enough information in human DNA for humans to develop. So we need to get DNA genes from elsewhere. Where do we get it? We get it from the environment. We get it from the bacteria, the microbes that colonize us. We get those from our mothers when we're born. Now, a number of things happened to me along the way that convinced me that what I was doing was not quite irrelevant, but I could really focus my research in a much more meaningful area. And the first event occurred when I was working at the University of California in Los Angeles. And being the youngest member of staff at the time, I got to do all the lectures that nobody else wanted to do. So the last men in the door, they gave me one day a lecture to do on intestinal contents. And in the course of, of preparing for this, I came across some experiments that changed my life. These were experiments that were done about a century ago, a century ago. Experiments done on germ-free animals. These are animals that were raised in the absence of bacteria, in a cocoon, like in a bubble isolator. These animals were not normal. They had a very undeveloped immune system, poor response to stress, very poor digestive function. In fact, they had to eat about 30% more calories to maintain an average weight. So the bacteria were clearly providing nutrient signals and driving signals for the development of those animals. And the message for me was, if I was going to continue studying human systems, then I was only getting half the story if I were studying exclusively human cells and human systems, if I didn't look at the microenvironment. And the second event that changed my mind about the whole thing was the discovery that some bacteria in the gut, in the intestine, can cause disease such as the discovery of Helicobacter as a cause of ulcers in humans. That told me that there are some diseases, the solution for which you'll never find it, looking exclusively at the human. So I decided this was the area I was going to focus on. But that would have to wait until I got back to Ireland. And that chance did come. And I got the chance to hook up with some really smart people in Cork. And we went after it. We had the people, but we needed the funding. Now, you can imagine at the time, this was not a fashionable area of research. Imagine trying to convince Science Foundation Ireland that we wanted to set up a thing that became the Elementary Pharmabiotics Centre in Cork, and we were going to study human faeces. And we were going to find new solutions for foods and new drugs in human faeces. That's not an easy sell, let me tell you, 10 years ago. But other people had the idea as well, and they started working as well, and there was a flurry of discoveries. And several people related changes in the bacteria in the skin and in the intestine, changes that occur, particularly in, in youth, changes that would increase your risk or change your risk of certain diseases. The diseases I'm talking about include cancer, cardiovascular disease, heart disease, diabetes, even obesity, and also immunologic diseases, allergies. We knew we were on the right track. And we were well set up to make a difference here. We had the people to do it, and we went for it. I'll just give you two examples of the sum of the discoveries and why they make a difference to you. The first discovery was we actually did show that the composition, the diversity of what you eat every day, what you ate today, the diversity of what you eat has a direct impact on the diversity of the bacteria in your intestine. And that, in turn, relates to various health measures particularly, for example, in the elderly. Frailty, their susceptibility to inflammation, their susceptibility to infections, their independence, their general health welfare. 
The next discovery was, we reasoned that if the bacteria are sending signals, if their DNA is sending signals for our development and our welfare, then it must be possible to probe those signals and develop new drugs and new ingredients for functional better foods. And so it is. I told you earlier that antibiotics can actually disturb your microbiota, but in actual fact, smarter antibiotics were being produced by these bacteria. And so it is, we found them. We found new antibiotics and even new anti-inflammatory drugs. Now, all of this is relevant to you and me. It's relevant to we here in Ireland in our Irish economy that's ailing, because there's immediate impact on our food industry and our pharmaceutical industry, if we're going to mine this for new foods and new drugs. But it gets better. For every euro the Science Foundation Ireland, for every euro that the taxpayer has invested in our research, we have recouped an additional euro. We have doubled the taxpayer's investment by foreign direct investment into this area. That's how hot this is. This has become the hottest area in biology, hottest area in medicine. And you don't have to take it from me. It was on the cover of the business magazine, The Economist, within the past month, Microbes Maketh Man. Let me tell you, microbes made me. They made you. They made all of us. You need to mind your microbes. You need to mind them with the appropriate diet and avoidance of broad-spectrum antibiotics. If you mind your microbes, they'll mind you. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>